So welcome everybody. Friday, Zoom calls. Last week we were doing something a little different and we ultimately decided that we did not like the view that we had last week because we couldn't see all your guys' faces. And uh, so we're back to the the regular view that we already have. And, and uh, we love to visit with you guys. So you guys raise your hands. Let's get some wins going on because um, it's been a week since – since we've talked, and I know y'all got some wins that's going on, whether it be silver lining wins, personal wins, we just want to hear about them. So who wants to go first? Uh, how, does Chance, you say Regina had a uh, had a win going on? Heck yeah, I talked to Regina just a little bit ago. So Regina, so how are you doing? I'm good. Can you guys hear me okay? We can. Okay, perfect. All right. So what mine was, um, which is kind of cool, I was telling Chance is that I, um, my daughter and son-in-law use all of your products, have for years, but my daughter actually had a, um, it's called an EDS, which is an electrodermal screening. And it's kind of a biofeedback that this technician did on her to see the, um, her joints, her organs, her connectivity with all of her muscles and everything inside of her body. And she was so unthrilled by that, that when I went to Texas last week for the Western Heritage, she set up an appointment for me to go, which was cool because I went to the same technician and she did this feedback of me kind of reading what's going on in my body. And at first I was, you know, okay, what is she really seeing? And she was spot on on some inflammation that she found. But what was really mm -hmm. cool is that I'm a kidney um, uh, transplant recipient and I do not have a kidney on my right side I only have a kidney on my left side that was put in by my son, like 12, uh, 2012. So when she started reading my organ, she says, I don't see kidney function. And um, she goes, so what's going on? And what organ did you have transplanted? So I explained the situation because she didn't know what that looked like. And I said, well, my native kidneys were left in so she could see the nerve, but she couldn't see function. So that was pretty cool. But when we got done with all of the screening, um, she also reads any kind of products that you're taking, um, vitamins, minerals, any supplements, even my prescription meds, to see how it's reacting to your body. And um, so when she tested my daughter, the first thing that um, she threw out a bunch of vitamins before and some supplements said, no, your body doesn't need it, it's not responding. But when she got to the silver lining every day, this technician was just totally blown away on how good this product was. And we were all so receptive to that and and that was good for us so that was pretty cool and um she kept saying like what is in this stuff I've never even heard of this product this is amazing and so she was pretty excited about that and we were too because that is a supplement I can take she did the same thing on my um son-in-law and he responded well to that one as well as the number 18 joint which you know he's a cowboy been in a lot of horse wrecks and stuff so he does some joint injuries Plus, he had also had a bad infection during a surgery. So, Chance, I didn't get to tell you this part. He actually was tested because I called to confirm on the INFX because of last week's meeting. And his body was extremely responsive to that, just like Mickey had said, that it's a really good product. So we were pretty excited that this technician out of the blue was reading our bodies. And she was just so thrilled at the silver lining products and how good they are for us. So it was pretty interesting. Very interesting. That's outstanding. I, I'm so glad that you shared that because, uh, you know, we, we knew what it could do, but it's, it, it's really awesome to hear that story and just see the doctors look at it and go, wow, this stuff is yeah. amazing. So, so that's, a, that's an awesome story. I'm so glad that your family's doing well. Thank so, you. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Simbre. Let's, uh, let's unmute Simbre. And she's got her hand up, her little virtual blue hand. What's up, Simbre? Hi, How are did you, you guys have, get to see the picture that I sent in about um, one of my horses uh, on her knee? Cynthia, I, Cynthia Butler's seen it. Yeah, well, I didn't get horse, to see it. It's, it's a big blown up arthritic type knee, really bad. The horse couldn't lay down. Um, I put her on the foot and bone and joint support. And the other day she was laying down as well as my husband went out to catch the other one I've had on laminate and foot and bone. 
and they was running away from him. He had to threaten them so he could catch the one to take her and have her chat. <laughs> oh, wow. They're, they're doing good. And no, then after good. last week, I took the INFX for five days. I've had like a sinus thing for probably 20 years. Breathing better than I've ever breathed in probably 20 years. It's Boom. been great. Let's go. That's <laughs> awesome. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank, <laughs> thank you for sharing that, Sam Ray. My dad, man of, man of few words right now. <laughs> yeah. Nikki, Nikki's had this, like, this just been a part of Nikki's life for, for so long. Like, it's like, this is who he is. So it's like not not new, you know? So that's why I respect Nikki so much is because, I mean, this is, the truth doesn't change as, we, as we've said before, you know? So uh, this has worked 20 years ago. It worked 200 years ago and it's going to work 200 years from now. So that's why this stuff is so awesome. Well, the same God that put it here in the beginning, this is what he taught Adam and Eve in the garden is how to use these plants. So he put it here and we used it and then along come this uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and, and medical association and they fit, realized they can make a lot of money on the health care of people and horses and dogs and all the animals and stuff so they just kind of pushed all this stuff to the back burner and of course now we don't hear about it unless we find something like what we're doing now so it's an awesome thing and and yeah these stories there's they won't change they're absolute the body knows what to do with them yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I know that you are out of town this week, Dad, and you are attending an event there and you stepped away and, and give us an hour of your time. So I want to dive into this this topic that we're, we're talking about today because it, it's, it's a pretty important topic, especially if you have horses, but not only the horses, the, do the dogs and ourselves. I know that uh, I've benefited over the years as well as you, and we always, whether it be us or our horses or animals, we are always going to get a cut or, or open wound of some sort, and I want to explain to everybody today what is the process that we take in doing that uh, in, in a holistic approach and with the herbs that, that we have. So, so go ahead and take it on over, and let's get this topic started so that we can have uh, most of the hour to visit about it. Well, for as long as I can remember, we've had, uh, well, we've had horses all my life. My dad and mom had horses and, and forever there's been need for something to heal open wounds. Uh, I don't know how many times as a kid growing up, I seen horses that got in barbed wire and, and got cut right across the front of the, the hawks on the back legs. and. And those was always really hard wounds to heal and almost always left a big wide uh, scar that went clear around the front of that, that hawk. And, you know, as time went on, when I was uh, a little older, uh, before I went into high school, so I had found a place down by the Sinbad Devs. He, the, and take minerals off of that and put them in open wounds. And so my dad always had a, a bag of rocks and rock water out of. But it was kind of come by and, and so on and so forth. But it did a really good job of healing things that was in this water that, that did a lot of the healing. Well, as, as, uh, Time went on and I learned more about the herbs and so on. I thought, you know, I wonder which of these herbs are really good herbs to heal the flesh. Well, there's one herb that the FDA got after a few years ago. They called it comfrey. And the comfrey root is, <clears throat> is an amazing, and the leaf is, uh, are amazing healing uh, herbs. And in fact, uh, one of its nicknames is is uh, bone heal, and uh, and let's see what else. Uh, anyway, uh, they claim that somebody somebody made the comment that if you put 
a leaf of that comfrey in some water and put some flesh in that water in pieces that it would heal together in the water. And I, I've never gone to that extent to check it out, but I can tell you that uh, I tell people, if you put uh, these herbs that we've put together uh, on a wound and don't get your finger out quick enough, you'll be healed to the horse. And so uh, that obviously I'm, I'm joking about that to some degree, but I really have seen some wounds heal up incredibly quickly. Uh, I've got a friend that lives up, uh, here where we live and, and a few years ago, it's, oh, see his boy graduated from high school last year, has been to a year of college. So he's been, and he was about five years old at the time. So it's been 13, 14 years ago that he was, he was a little kid and he was at a horse walker and he grabbed the, the pulley on the belt and that, that pulley run his fingers through that pulley and uh, he cut these three fingers off, right? These three right here. And uh, one of them was just hanging by some skin and the other two was cut clear off. And so he, Tony's a uh, fireman, he grabbed him and took him to the, the hospital and uh, told him to sew him back on. Well, Tony had had some other experiences with our product and he knew that there was, that it was pretty healing. And so he, they said, well, we can't sew them back on. They'll never take. And he said, you put them back on and we'll, figure out how to make them take. So in the meanwhile, while he's in there getting his fingers cut, sewed back on, Tony called me and he says, what do you think about this? I said, just make some tea by boiling this product that, that we call uh, power dust. That's a, it's a, it's a poultice mix. And I said, just make a, a tea out of that. And then while that cool it down to where it's comfortable for him and let him just hang his fingers in that cup of tea while he's watching TV or whatever. And uh, Tony said when they got him out of the operating room, that one of those fingers was tur turned completely sideways. He said it did a terrible job of attaching it. And anyway, uh, that boy just graduated from high school last year and uh, you can't tell where those fingers was ever cut. He was a quarterback on their high school basketball, or baseball, or, yeah, football team. And in fact, got a scholarship to go on to play college football. So anyway, that's only one of the many, many, many stories that I've, that I've got. But this, this product is, uh, that we're talking about today is the absolute go-to for open wounds. Uh, a few years ago, I, I was putting on a, a, a rodeo school and I was sitting on my saddle horse looking out the back of the the indoor arena and I seen one of my horses at, actually got at, into a uh, alley with and there was a bull in that alley that had not yet come in to get his horns tipped off and so he had sharp horns and that horse went up the alley one way and when she come back the other way that bull was arguing with another bull through the fence and that mare trotted between them two bulls and the bull backed up and then the bull on the other side kind of jumped at him and he he seen the bull jump at him so he t turned his attention back to him and took his horns and meanwhile this horse was right between him he hit the horse with that horn and he ripped it right from behind her elbow right out the top of her withers it was easily uh two and a half foot cut right straight up her side and you could put your hand to to there I'm trying to see it to there all the way through there it was really a a, a, a severe cut well, I seen it happen and so I just emptied a, a chute and brought her right in right then and I threw this power dust in that in this uh, open wound and then I put her out back out and, and I brought her in twice a day and, and put power dust right in the wound now when it's when it's an open wound like that you can use just the powder and throw it in there and it does fine if it's an older wound uh, then you want to wrap it in place and try to encourage it to to be bring out some of the moisture to to help it and there's uh but anyway within just oh just a couple of weeks that that wound was was about that big about that wide and it pulled down from both ends and was was pink all the way around that and it just it was just such a a cool uh picture and i never took any pictures that 
time of, of the wound. Of course, that was back before cell phones and now they've got pictures of everything that happens. But at that time, it was just, it was just such a absolute to me to see how quickly that healed. I thought, wow, why would you ever sew anything up? But I've seen other things I've seen. I've got to where now I don't sew anything. I don't, you know, I've tried to do all kinds of different things. The Colt hit, hit a T post one time and tore the whole shoulder off and we laid that Colt down and scotch scotched him and laid him down and I sewed that clear up and got it almost healed got it almost sewed up and he struggled and wrenched and pulled all the stitches out so I just let him up and put the power dust in there he ended up healing up with almost without a scar I mean I can I can tell you stories for a long time about how quickly and how well it does but uh, the body knows how to do these things if we just give it the right uh, ingredients. And this is, an, this is an old story. Anybody that's heard me talk at all on, on here knows that uh, I'm going to say that the body knows how to deal with these herbs. It's just an incredible thing that, the, that uh, how well the body knows how to use these things. If you get the right, right herbs, well, there's, there's herbs in, in the power dust to promote promote circulation, there's herbs in there to promote healing, there's herbs to, to uh, counter infections and, and so on and so forth. Although when you have a bad uh, cut, I always recommend to, to use some of the infection fighting herbs, the number 25 INFX, like we talked about last week, that just keeps the infections out. And I mean, it's like, it, it's not even a bump in the road. And uh, so, Anyway, Chance, there's some pictures there. Uh, here a couple of years, well, it's been a couple more than a couple of years. How long have you been in your house, Josie? Seven, eight years? Yeah, so Charlie was born, so seven years. Okay, so uh, we was digging some French drains there because there was a lot of water around there and was trying to drain that water off of that location so we could build the house. We was digging ditches about all four foot wide and six feet deep and filling them up with the rock that we was digging out where the foundation was going. And one of these rocks was about that I was, I got out of the back hole and, and, and was handling it by hand because I wanted to turn it upside down so it fit better in the ditch. And as I turned it, it was shaped like a pyramid. And as I turned that, uh, and, and I might add right where I had a hold of it, it was broke lava rock and so it was real sharp it was it was almost bread knife type sharp and it, I had that right against my hand but it was I had my gloves on and as I turned that rock to roll it over there the one of the rocks I was standing on rolled and my foot gave and I and that rock fell a different place than I was planning on it and it trapped my finger between that sharp edge and another rock and the rock probably weighed 200 pounds. So it was, and when I, when it hit my finger, I thought that it took it off. I felt it separate, but I, I had a glove on. I didn't know if it was gone or not, but I, I took one of my other fingers and felt it and I could feel the feeling. So I thought, well, it's not gone. But anyway, I pulled my glove off. And you was with me, wasn't you, Josie? Yeah, I was, I was there. Uh, and I, and I, I knew it was serious because usually don't show a lot of pain on things. And, and I could tell you were getting a little lightheaded and it was a serious, serious oh, no. deal. It was, it was uh, I, I thought I cut it off. And, and so the concern was there that I might've just lost my finger. But anyway, when I pulled my glove off, uh, it was still there. So I took some black tape and put around it. And then that night I put the herbs on it. And then the next, uh, I took, I put the poultice on it. And the following day, I thought, man, I need to be taking pictures of this. And this picture right here is the first picture that I took. And it was two days after it happened. And then I took a picture a day. And Chance, if you'll just go through those, there's the second day, or the second day we took a picture. And then the next day, and then one more day, and then the next day. And I think that's all I meant to answer is get one more. Yeah, all right. So there, and so this, that represented a week from the time I'd done it until the time I quit taking pictures of it. 
And uh, as you can see, that's pretty incredible. And today, where's my finger at here? There it is. <laughs> there's no, there's hardly a scar on it. You can, maybe if you knew right where to look, you could see a scar there, but it's incredible how well these things heal up. Uh, I had a black horse that I got on one night and he bucked into the edge of, uh, into the corner of a, one of those dumpsters they pick up and haul the trash off. I had a little wing stuck out the side with like a big washer on the end of, he hooked out with his shoulder and he tore a hole as big as a football in the in his front of his shoulder and uh, that horse was one of my good horses and he had no reason to treat me that way and him that way but he anyway I got on him and took him to a roping that night and, and I had two or three guys say oh you need to get that sewed up I said this horse needs to go to work he's acting like a dang brat and so anyway I put him to work and and, uh, but I treated him with the herbs and so on. And within a week, them guys seen that horse and they says, holy heck, is this the same horse? I said, yeah. They said, man, you, did you have that sewed up? And I says, no, it was never sewed. And, and that horse didn't even have a scar. I, you couldn't find a scar on him. And so anyway, it's just, it's a pretty incredible thing how, how quick and how well it works. Um, and you talk about putting pressure on, you know, I, I have a personal testimony as, as well. And this is like a kind of a testimony of, of what kind of pressure you can actually put on it and how well it actually heals. Um, you know, me and my dad used to ride bucking horses for a living. We rodeoed professionally. And I was at an event one time, uh, bucking horses were loaded there in the national anthem. And this horse had a bunch of, uh, uh, like a ratted mane, cockle burrs all over, and you want to get those out so you don't hook a rowel in there with your foot. And so I was cleaning them out, and I had a knife and was just kind of cutting the the cockle burrs out. <clears throat> well, I run that knife past my past my my pointer finger, and I it just happened quickly. And I I looked down, I bent my finger, and my bone come out the top of my top of my my skin. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that was my riding hand. It's the hand that I ride with. And uh, I, was, I, I was just kind of in panic mode. I was like, well, I'll just wrap this up real quick. I jumped down and got some vet wrap put on it. And when I, if you guys know bareback riding at all, you kind of shove your hands in the rigging pretty tightly. I run it in there and I was just gonna close my hand and leave that finger open like that. And I was like, ah, I can't do that. So I just shut it down and just kind of gritted it out. And I ended up riding when I got off on the pickup man at the other end of the arena, I was walking back and the blood was just trickling off my elbow. Like my, my whole glove was clear full of blood. And uh, the paramedics come to me and I said, no, I'm fine. I just cut my finger before. And anyways, that was the start of the 4th of July. And 4th of July is our biggest week of the year. And I had 10 rodeos to go to that week. And I just started stuffing the power dust in that every single day. And I got on one to three head of bucking horses a day that whole 10 day period, which is a lot of pressure on that. And uh, by the end of the 10 days, it was, it was almost sealed up completely. Wasn't bleeding at all, didn't hurt me. So that's a lot of pressure to put on something. I mean, it literally was like putting super glue in there, except it healed correctly. And one thing I like about the power dust is you're healing from the inside out. You know, you talk about, you talk about, um, you know, stitching something up and sewing something. And I'm not saying that there's not a spot for stitching because, you know, if, if you've got an abdominal wound and, and your guts are trying to fall out or, you know, on a horse or a dog or whatever it is, yes, there is a, there is a, a need and a time for that. But most cases, if you let it heal from the inside out, it's like this and it, and it heals so good. As you can see, my finger right there, you see a small scar on it, but I have complete mobility in it and it's clean. It, it, you don't get this, you know, proud flesh and ugly looking scars. It's, it's, it's super clean, wouldn't you say, Dad? Yeah, and as you mentioned, proud flesh. The only time you ever have, have proud flesh is when it's not, not healing. It's, uh, that's an indicator that it's not healing right. Either you don't have the right nutrition in that, healing spot or you don't have the circulation in that that healing spot so uh and real frequently you see that with 
ever other kind of, of uh, modalities like stitch or not stitch, it doesn't matter. Uh, the stitch is just try to hurry and get it closed up. Don't worry about closing it up. It'll close up on its, on its own as it heals. Now, uh, another thing that I'll bring out right now is I, I'm, I don't like hydrating wounds, open wounds, like spraying it off with, with garden hose and that kind of stuff. You're way better off just take your hand and just brush that. If there's, say, manure, cake manure or a scab or anything, just brush it off and then put the power dust on and get back out of the way because uh, uh, the hydration seems to introduce new problems to these wounds. I just see people that hydrate all the time and, and it never turns out clean and well. So uh, that question come up just a couple of days ago, a gal called me from Texas and asked, you know about it i said no no don't don't i wouldn't do that so so anyway. i got a question this morning about the product and they asked about flies uh, bugs and flies getting on on the open wound when you're when you're treating it what's your they they won't they won't get on it if it's if it's healing uh they get on where when bugs are attracted to anything it's because of the taste of what's coming off of it so you'll see bugs flies hanging around the face of a horse that's not doing well. In fact, if you see flies hanging on the face of one of your horses or one of your cattle or dogs or anything and not the others, that's the one that's got, that's exuding uh, serums that that fly or that, pe that, that pest likes to exhume. So anyway, that's, I, I let the flies t point, point it out to me, but when you've got a wound that's healing like, and, and flies don't necessarily care uh, or in favor of some of the herbs that's in the, the power dust. I do not worry about flies. Okay. So. Um, we've got a couple questions over here. Uh, let's unmute. Uh, well, I guess, I guess Shirley just got her, her question answered on do you ever wash the power dust off? Um, I just brush it off. Now let me let me go on and, and, and talk a little more about about application of some of this stuff. Now, if you've got an old wound, and say, for instance, uh, I think Chance has got a a video of a horse that I had. This horse cut his leg the first or second day I left for the national finals rodeo one year, and this horse. Uh, um, <clears throat> had a pretty pretty good cut on the inside of his leg. And and when I got back, it was a week old or or older. And so this is that this is the picture of that wound. And I'm showing here how I make I made a poultice out of the power dust by putting water in it. And then I because it was an older wound, I put it on a piece of saran wrap. Now that what that'll do is it'll sweat that. It'll it'll heat that up a little bit. And then I I just uh, ace bandage it in place and you leave it that way for 12 hours and then you take it off for 12 hours and right now I've just taken that off and right here I'll just brush that off you see the the uh, infection and the the pus that's coming out with the the power dust this is the power dust when I took the ace bandage off and so then I'll just rub that I'll just brush that off uh, and then I throw the power dust right in the wound. Just the, the powder then goes right on the wound. And I leave it open for 12 hours. And then I come back and repeat the same process. Now, if you'll notice in this horse's hock or his ankle, there's some swelling. And that's a good indication that you've got uh, a kidney issue going on too. So when I seen that, I, I put the horse on kidney cleanse and obvious or ki kidney support. This wound is... Oh, probably a week old or from the time I started. And you see that pink line all the way around that? That's a really good healing indicator. So when you got that, you, it's coming in the right direction. It's coming and it's coming fairly quickly. So you should never see uh, the, heat, the granulation. But right here is, I, I'm going to say overall, this was a two week process. And you see, hardly even see a scar. There's a white mark there where there was a little excess heat, but it heals up pretty much without even a scar. 
Yeah. So do you remember, uh, do you remember last year when I got in trouble by my wife with Bodie? <laughs> so my, my, which my time? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Which time? So my son's name is Bodie and we had some, uh, we had some rope and steers actually chance you were there because you've seen the panic on my face. I was like, Oh crap. But I'll tell you this story real quick. So, um, he wanted to ride these, he wanted to ride these steers and he was eight years old and we were roping. And, um, so we're like, well, we'll let, we'll let you ride one up. So he got on one, rode him up and he, he'd fall, he'd fall off cause he had nothing to hold on to. This happens five or six times and he keeps landing on his face. So I'm like, we got to get you something to hang on to. So the next one, I, I got a rope for him so he could hang on. And my wife told me, she says, I don't really want him riding without a helmet. And I says, I'll, you're all right. I says, I used to ride these all the time when I, when I was younger without a helmet. Well, the very next steer, he's holding on to the rope and he's coming into a fence line. He's falling off the side. And I says, I says, just let go, just let go. And he wouldn't let go. Well, that steer run his head into a pipe fence. And I went down there and I thought he was knocked out, Chance. I mean, his eyes were crossed. I mean, he was out of it but what I did notice that he had a blood running out of his head and he had cut a gash in his head that that big and I mean I I had my rope and glove and had it covered up and I was trying to get past mama without her seeing it it's just gushing out of his face and everywhere and she was freaking out and she's like well you gotta go to the hospital and I says no I said go get me some of that power dust and we packed the wound in two days I'm, I'm telling you, two days, it was completely healed up. And she's like, that was when my wife got a testimony of the power dust because she thought I was absolutely crazy for not taking him and getting it stitched up. But uh, I'm, I'm telling you guys, this, this is probably the most eye-opening product on the market that we have, for sure. So I, I, would, I, would, I would put my ranch on the best. So... Yeah, it's pretty good for wounds. Uh, and and it, there's some places where you can't wrap, you know, like we showed a leg a leg wound, but say that, that wound was on the side of the neck, that's pretty hard to wrap or on the on the side, like the mare I was telling you about the, the bull hook. You know, those are hard places to wrap. So and don't need to be wrapped. But if you have a wound like on, in the thigh or, or I'm not so, yeah, the the hawk or someplace where you can wrap it that's that's just a quicker way to get the initial process started if it's an excuse me if it's an old wound here's another one of those pictures that this just happened the other day chance you talk you talked to the lady about this one and this is this only took like a week didn't it or something Chance is muted, so you can't hear him. Oh, yeah, I think it was. Uh, I think that was thirty days from the first picture to that very last last picture right there. But, but that healed up amazing. Yeah, and so she was just throwing that powder on dry twice a day. Is how she was was doing that. When do you start? We talk about the Equisav sometimes. When do you start using the Equisav? Well, and, and that's it. That's, this is a great time to talk about that, Chance, because when you have an open wound that's dried out a little bit, you can use that salve to go around there and heal. And, 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 and the salve itself is very healing. In fact, I've got a friend that said, you put that salve on a doorknob, it'll grow hair on it. He says, that is something. That is amazing how quick the hair grows back with that salve. And, and, uh, Many people are, are aware of uh, emu oil and, and the healing there. Well, this, this salve, the, uh, the base ingredient is ostrich oil. And ostrich oil is, ostrich and emus are both members of the ratite family. And when they, was, when they had all the rage about the, the emu oil and how good it was, I thought, well, I'm gonna check this ostrich oil out because I was, in the ostrich business at the time. And I thought I've got to try to figure out some way to get some of my money back on that project. And so anyway, I, I got a friend that's a, a, 
chemist and I took the oil to him and he broke it down. He said, this is better oil than the emu oil. He said, this is incredibly good oil. He said, uh, he said, how much of this can you get? And I says, well, I didn't have that many birds, but at the time, you know, I thought, well, there's things we ought to try and experiment with. And I come up with this oil originally for healing of pressure sores and, and bed sores and that kind of stuff from people that was incapacitated or, or uh, in some way or another couldn't get away from their wheelchair or bed because it was a problem around a lot of these places. And the FDA was so tough on me to, uh, to market that to there that I just rolled it into our horse deal. And, and we use, actually use that for thrush, for uh, galls, for bite marks, for just any, anything that's abnormal. It's also good to put on uh, places where the hair's been knocked off because it'll you'll see a little fine hair growth just sometimes hours have to put it on so it's it's pretty good but the, the best place in wound healing is when the, the wound is actually dry rather than hydrating or anything just put that around the inside of that uh, and that way that that power dust will powder will stick to that and so you get the benefit of both the salve and the and the power does, but so, Dad, uh, I want to go to another question here. Karina is on here, and she's got a question to ask you. So, Karina, are you there? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Gotcha. Yes, we can. Okay, so um, I don't mean to hijack your your call. I'm always a week late with my problem, <laughs> um, but I've been like rushing home to get on this call to ask Nikki about this. So. I have a, a, I'm hoping you can answer it. I have a six-year-old gelding that um, I, I use all your guys' stuff. I, I could work for your company. Like I'm the biggest believer. So I had this, uh, my one of my barrel horses last summer, he, I thought he had a cinch sore and it turned into like a fungal infection and I treated it. It took me a long time. I realized it was something internal going on. I did give him like XNL and an internal fungal looking back. I don't, don't judge me, but I did. And then um, long story short, in December, he came in with some scratches on a hind foot and I was treating it and I thought I had it under control. And um, then I realized like it wasn't healing. So I was like, oh, I have to use silver lining herbs. So I had him on the kidney and the liver and the INFX and I thought I had it under control. And then it, um, he broke out on his right side, like his dorsal top right, kind of onto his withers with all these welts, which I thought, okay, that's from the liver, um, the detoxing. And then um, I knew I was on the right track because he kind of would breathe like a tick heavy. I noticed it, no one else could, but I noticed it. And he would have like a little gunky stuff in his eyes once in a while. And that went away with the liver and kidney cleanse. So I knew I was on the right track. He has since come back with these scratches and the welts are like still there. It's been a couple of weeks and I'm kind of getting nervous because I'm resisting the urge to go to the vet <laughs> um, because he's like, you know, one of my good horses. And so I'm just wondering if you can kind of give me some coaching on what I'm thinking is like immune kidney, liver and INFX. Um, he's fat and shiny, which is, he looks healthy, he's working, and he's got these scratches coming back in his hind legs. So I'm wondering if you can give me some advice on how to treat that. Like I was hosing before, which now I realize bad idea. Um, so that's my long-winded question. Uh, short answer is immune support. His immune system okay. is waning, and that's the reason probably that it came back. Uh, okay. you, can, you can alleviate the issue and then and then it'll come back if the immune system's compromised. So I would, I would just simply put him on the, with what you're doing, put him on the, the immune support and you should, you should be able to clear it up. Should I put some of the stuff you're talking about today on the actual scratches? Not necessary. It's an just, internal thing. Just yeah. leave them? Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh my God, okay. Well, I'm a professional worrier, so I'll do the worrying for both of us. Yeah, you so, do that, okay. and I'll I'll go play golf. You'll relax, perfect. Okay. 
And Karina, what what is your what are you feeding on a daily basis? If you don't mind me asking, like, what's your feeding regimen? Well, he's on a little about a half an acre. They all have about half an acre of it's just like a, a grass pasture, and then he gets morning and night a whole bunch of uh, Timothy hay, and it's got about 15, 20 percent alfalfa. And then I have them on beet pulp, some flax and oats and silver lining herbs. But that wasn't always the case. So that's like, uh, you know, the last five months. Last summer, I was feeding him more of a processed feed. Mm -hmm. So I can see, um, I can see where this all built up from, is what I'm saying. Uh, my other two horses that I have on all your guys' stuff for whatever I think they need are just amazing. Working amazing happy fat winning it's just this one that i'm well I'm and, and this is the one that would get uh sick if you was hauling them and and you come across a virus or some kind of an airborne infection somewhere this is the horse that would get it because he's yeah. his immune system's obviously somewhat compromised and if the other two if their immune system's up they're going to be fine but and that's the importance of knowing about the immune support that we offer is because the immune system ebbs and flows according to the stress levels. So yes, maybe this horse never did get above where he needed to be on his immune, his immune system and the other okay. two are, are fine with it. But this one here, uh, you get his immune system up and it, it should all work out well. Okay, I will do that. Thank you guys so much. You're yeah, thank you, Karina. Um, Let's get to this next question here, Dad, because I know that you got to pop out of this call just a touch early today. Um, let's unmute Russell and Annette Borg because I want to get some more depth on what's going on here. Chance, did you find them? I'm over here. Can you hear me? Yep, there you are. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, I rescued a horse 10 years ago, and when I found him, he was in a field. He had a million flies all over him. He, his feet were overgrown, um, but he came back just fine. The flies still love him. And once we brought him from uh, one state out to California, now we live in an area where summer sores are very predominant. He gets one every year. Sometimes it costs me a thousand dollars a summer to deal with all his summer sores. Um, they love to get up inside his sheath they've he's had summer sores on his penis and his sheath he's swelled up to where he's his poor sheath is bigger and literally split in half because the flies won't leave him alone so i keep a belly band on him from cashel i have three of them i just rotate them every couple of days to keep the urine smell down um but last year the the only place he didn't have i call it armor you know he had his fly sheet he had his leggings he had his everything was, you know, a little bit over his hawk. So he did get a summer sore there and he got a summer sore on his cheek because those are the only two, only places I couldn't keep the flies off. But I'm curious, it only takes a few days. So like, let's say I'm gone for the weekend and somebody comes along and says, oh, his belly band is all messed up. I'll just take it off. If I come back on Monday, he's got the beginnings of the summer sores. So I'm at, my question is, can I use the power dust up inside of his sheath area? Can you actually put it on a penis? What other support can, you know, you provide to keep his, I know obviously it's immunity, he's 40 something years old. So I, I'm, I know he's going down, but he's, he's healthy. He gets up every day, he eats, he's got buck. He's, he's a good boy, you know? So I'd like to just let him go out gracefully. Actually, I wouldn't be so concerned about the, the, uh, uh, power dust as I would uh, alleviating the infection. That the uh, Did you say you had him on the liver product or no? I don't have him on anything yet. I was oh, okay. about ready to place an order for the summer and I wanted to figure out what I actually needed to get. Well, um, if I was doing it, initially mm -hmm. you're going to need to kind of kind of go the gamut with him because one, at, at his age, he's never had any He's never had any detox. So I, I'd go after the kidneys and the liver for sure. And then I'd want his immune system to come up and I'd want his want the infection dealt with. The flies are there because that's a good place for him to find something to eat. So mm -hmm. all we got to do is eliminate, eliminate that. And so, you know, at this point, I just, I just 
do uh, kidney and liver in the morning and immune support and infection fighter in, in the evening. And you okay. should, and then make sure that he's not getting any, uh, any sugar type feeds, no molasses for sure. No, no, I've got, I've got him on just a, they call it a meadow blend and he gets yep. a tiny bit of alfalfa because he gets skinny if I don't give him. A well, little. that's, that's, that's a great, that's a great, uh, uh, way to go about the feeding i i can't punch a hole in that at all but i would make sure that you know i mean in 40 years of not having the help that they need for the liver and the kidneys it's amazing he's made it to here it really is an amazing story but if if i was doing it that's the way i would have to go about it because those two those two organs for sure are compromised and the immune system's down and you've got pre infection present obviously so. okay and then don't worry about the, the topicals on that kind of a situation. It, topical won't, is not the, the answer. Okay. Uh, it's got to come from inside. Okay. All right. Well, if I can do, jump on it, I think we'll be okay. But <laughs> yeah. No, I, and, they, and they respond so well to that, you know, to the right stuff that I, I don't doubt that you will get the hit, get the upper on it. Okay. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Yeah, Chance, I'm, I'm having a tough time pulling up uh, Facebook right now, but is there any questions on the Facebook side that you can see? How long do you have? Nope, I think we're, I think we're good there. But, I mean, I, we can't go off this subject without telling the craziest power death story we've ever had about Miracle Max. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. I, I kind of, I was stuck on horse world. What about that dog? Huh? I mean, did he not get in a, in a fight with a back tire on a car? Isn't that what happened there? Yeah, that and is. He right. tore, he tore all the meat off of that back leg, the entire, all the meat off the, <laughs> in fact, the vet that took care of this, uh, reconstructed a tendon for that leg out of fishing cord, fishing line. And so hats off to Patrick Jones. I mean, what an incredible story that is right there. But anyway, he, he uh, see, this is a good place for a vet to come in because the, the tendon wasn't going to grow back together because it was gone. It was completely wore out. And he made a tendon uh, out of that fishing line and then did the protocol that we're just now talking about, the... Uh, power dust and the uh, ostrich oil salve and there's the the power dust in place before it was wrapped and then anyway as time went on just start going through those pictures chance and you can see the healing you see the the trademark uh pink line all the way around that's important you've got to see that that's that's the healing process but that's what it looks like when it's healing properly no proud, no proud flesh. And you see, you notice how the skin's following it? The skin follows it. That's cool. Hey, is that, is that all of them? Yeah, that's okay. But that dog healed up uh, once again, almost without a scar and never a stitch. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, that's, but I mean, it's just not, it's just not, uh, it, it's not surprising to me. I just see this kind of stuff. I've seen so much of it that, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, there's, there's story after story. It's, it, it's amazing. You know, Jody over here says my mare got cut on the inside front leg. It's been about two weeks. Is that too late to use the dust? That's a good question. I think he's frozen. <laughs> so I guess I'll pick this up. The answer to that question, Jody, is no, it's, it's never too late. Um, you know, obviously ideal is to start right away and, and get on top of it. But uh, there's two things that we have to do here. You know, we got to address the actual open wound with, with the power dust. And we have to address the infection and make sure that the infection goes away. So the number 25 INFX 
and the uh, the 16 power dust with the Equisab. So it's just never too late. Dad, are you coming back or is he out? He might try to re rejoin here. Yeah, and I know that he's getting to the to the end of his time. Um, yeah, I, I have to share explain mine. That, mine first explain time. that getting into my time. <laughs> to the end of my time. What did you mean by that? I meant on the Zoom call. On the Zoom call. <laughs> All right, but yes, I am. I, I don't know how much of that you caught, but if the if the wound is older, that's that's when you can use the sweat. In other words, make the poultice, put it on a piece of saran wrap or something like that, and then put it on the wound. Then after that all starts breathing again and, and starts opening up, then you can just put it on like a paper towel and put it on and wrap it in place. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, if, a, if the wound's fresh, you can just put the powders, the powder directly on the wound and it's, it's fine. So I guess if, with that, I'm at the end of my time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on to that today, Dad, and enjoy the rest of your vacation. We'll hold things down here at the fort. All right, man. Well, you guys have a good one. Thanks, and thanks everybody for tuning in. And I'm signing off. Adios. All right. Sounds good. Hey, Chance, do you want to take the role of of my dad now, or or <laughs> or what? Yeah, so we just had this question on Facebook, and, and we have uh, a few more minutes here before Josie and I have to go to our next meeting, so we'd love to, to visit with you guys some, some more. Had this question on, on Facebook saying about using power dust on a hoof abscess, and also I get the question a lot about like puncture wounds, if it's all right to, to use power dust for that, so... I guess it depends on how big the puncture wound, but as far as the abscess is, we got to get to the root of the issue there. And, uh, you know, obviously we know infection is there. So our number 25 INFX, that's our go-to product for abscesses. Let's take care of the infection and, uh, you know, not necessarily, you know, have to worry about the power dust on that. Let's, let's get the infection out of the horse and, and that'll, that'll heal up. But, uh, you know, puncture wound, I mean, are we talking about a, a, a needle puncture wound or are we talking about a uh, six inch puncture <laughs> wound? I'm not really sure, but depending on how, how big it is, um, you know, the Equisav is, is great for small stuff. I, there's one thing that is for certain, everybody, whether it's in my house, in my trailer, or in my barn, there is three products that I don't ever go without. And that is these that, I, that we've talked about because you just never know. You never know when it's gonna, ha when it's gonna happen. And this is an emergency situation. It's so good to get on this right away. And that's why it's so important to have it around. And, uh, and I, I, just, I just will not, I've seen what it can do and I just will not leave home without it, be at home without it. It's just, it's something that has to be there. Um, Chance, what uh, what other stories do you have, right quick, with with, with what we've been doing? Because I, I mean, the, the, this yeah, there's always good stories of the power dust. I mean, the biggest story, well, Max, that that dog is an incredible story. But uh, gosh, like when I first started 10, 15 years ago, I had this customer call, and she had a non-healing wound in her horse's fetlock, and I think it was like six, eight weeks or something like it's been forever since it was just weeping and oozing and infected. And so um, she called called us and said, what to use? So we suggested the, the 16 power dust for that horse. And it was like two days later, she said she started to see something kind of shiny um, in the middle of that wound. And so uh, ended up taking it to the vet at that, that point to investigate a little bit more. But it was like the end of a screwdriver that was jammed up in that horse's leg and that the withdrawing agents from the power dust started pulling that that out so I thought that was super cool but I've heard so many stories like a horse that kicks through a fence or through like a um, um, plywood wall in a stall or something like that and get like a lot of like uh, um, slivers or um, wood chips in it or whatever um, pull that that kind of stuff off so that's, that's the coolest thing about the power dust is, you know, that, that first 24 hours or even 12 hours when you first change that bandage, 
all the infection it pulls out or any debris or anything like that. It's, it's so incredible. I mean, we, I try to cut my thumb off with a, with a rope or in a rope horse accident here, I don't know, five years ago or something like that. Same thing, barely have a tiny little scar there. So it's just, it's incredible. Just like, you know, Mickey says, I mean, the body can heal itself. We just got to get out of its way to do it. And, and sometimes that is just giving, um, well, it's giving the proper nutrition in order to do it. And, and this, the herbs are, are that. So, uh, yeah, I see we have a question over here from Alicia right quick. We probably have time for, to, to answer this real quick. She says, recommendation for a wound with possible joint infection. You know, uh, the answer is still the same. You know, it doesn't matter where it's at or whatever. We still know that we have a wound. We still know that we have infection. That's what's so cool about the number 25 INFX. Whether it's viral, fungal, bacterial, it doesn't matter. It's going to address all infections. So, um, and not to mention, this stuff is so so easy and pleasant on the animals uh, to to treat this with. Um, you know, it's not a it's not a rough experience for them. They're they're not having anxiety over over what we're doing, and and because that's a that's a big thing too is keeping keeping the animals calm and, and feeling good because when their anxiety is high, it's it's very um, stressful on the immune system and. And the immune system is what we want to do good right now. This is all connected. That you know the the whole the whole horse is all connected together. So, um, yeah. So the number sixteen power dust, uh, Equisav, INFX. That's the route that I would go. So, you know, we're at the top of the hour here. It's two o'clock. We just thoroughly enjoy these Friday calls. I mean, this is something that we look forward to all all week. We love seeing your guys' faces. I wish more of you would turn your cameras on. I'm gonna keep giving you guys crap until you turn your cameras on <laughs> each each week. But I know some of you are working and, and thank you so much for tuning in. We just really, truly wanna help as many horses, dogs, and, and people as we possibly can. That's our mission here at Silver Lining Herbs. Please spread the word about these calls. Um, call us here direct if you have any, any questions. I know there's a couple other questions on here, but uh, I know you guys have our number here. Call us direct. You can talk to me and Chance specifically on a daily basis here at Silver Lining. And, uh, you know, as always, guys, be safe, be healthy, and be a legend. Let's go.